hi and welcome to my channel or if you're a returning subscriber hi again it's so nice to see you back here for another video i hope you're all having an amazing day today my name is tess lark and this is an art and beauty channel so if those are videos you're interested in make sure you subscribe because i'm here for you every single week and this week i'm going to be showing you how to make these beautiful geode style resin trinket trays And so we'll be doing this project two different ways, finishing one with gold, finishing the other with silver, just to kind of see how it goes. I'd love to know your thoughts down below which one's your favorite at the end of this video. And I will try to keep my rambling really short today because this video is pretty long. This is a multi-step, multi-day project as the resin does need to cure in between. But I hope that you enjoy this video and that you find it informative. And if you do like this video, please don't forget to give it a like. It not only helps out my channel a lot, but it also lets me know that I'm making content that you want to see from me. As always, I will have everything that I use for this project linked down below in the description, so all the materials will be there if anybody's interested in trying this project for themselves. And with all that being said, let's craft. I pre-mixed my resin to save some time for this video, but I actually mixed up too much. This was my first time using this mold. And so these molds take 150 milliliters each. So I ended up going ahead and mixing enough to make like one and a half. You'll see later that I do go ahead and make two pieces. So go ahead and mix up 300 milliliters of resin for two of these or 150 milliliters for one. And I'm just adding my pigments to my pre-mixed resin. I'm using alcohol ink, they're black by Pinata Colors, and also some mica powder by Arteza. Poe says hello, as always. And in that one, I'm using their Noir. Hi, Poe. Scraping the sides and the bottom of my container as I go, making sure I get all of that pigment really well incorporated together. And after I've mixed my resin thoroughly, I'll let it sit to the side for a few moments, maybe like five or so minutes, just to allow some air bubbles to come up to the surface. And then I can pop them with my heat gun pretty easily before moving on to the next step. And here you can really see where those bubbles accumulated at the bottom of my popsicle stick. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop those and then I'll begin to fill the first mold. Just giving some time for my resin to even out because it is pretty viscous and I don't want to overfill my mold or have it spill over the sides. And then I'll let the resin cure overnight, and once the pieces are completely cured and ready to go, I'll go ahead and pull them out of their molds. Just loosening up the outer corners to pull each piece out. And then I'll just set those off to the side while I get my colors ready. So I've mixed up about 20 milliliters of resin here, just clear resin. Again, I'm letting it sit for a bit so you can see all those bubbles that I'm going to go ahead and hit with my heat gun before moving on. But for this project, I would actually mix up probably 30 to 40 milliliters of resin because I did kind of get a little bit short on the white color for two of these pieces. So I'm essentially going to make double the amount of white resin as I do for my two colors, which for this project I'm going to use black and a gray color. And I'm mixing up more white because it's going to take more white to cover the bases. The colors are really just going to act as like a little bit of a highlight and they're going to spread a lot, especially when I use my heat gun. So just mixing up my white here using pinata colors. And as always, I will go ahead and link all the materials that I use down below in the description. I'll also be using some space gray mica powder by Arteza. And the cup that I'm adding my space gray to, I'm just adding a tiny little bit and it does already have some white alcohol ink. I'm just going to adjust the color a little bit, adding a little bit more white until I'm happy with it because I do want a nice true gray to go next to the black and white in these pieces. 
And then for my black, I'm mixing up a little bit of this mica powder along with the pinata colors in their black or their noir. And that's just going to give me a really nice metallic black. The general rule of thumb when mixing pigments with resin is you don't want to go more than 10% of pigments to the quantity of resin that you're using. My next step is going to be attaching some of my larger crystals using some hot glue. And I typically like to do these in little clusters of two or three. I think it just looks the best that way. I don't know what my problem is. I didn't have my camera on for this step, but I just carefully poured some of my white resin down around the base of those larger crystals. And it doesn't have to be too perfect. I'm just going to use that to secure down my crushed glass. So I'm putting that down here. So you can see that process here a little bit better, just making sure my cup is really pointed so I can pour my resin slowly and using a popsicle stick just to spread some of that resin out and make sure that it's not all of those little crevices before placing down my crushed glass. And next I'm going to go ahead and start layering my colors starting with white and I'm going for a marble effect so I'm going to have a white background and then I'll just put a few streaks of my black and my gray through that white. And like I said earlier, I didn't really mix up quite enough resin for the white, so I'm just kind of doing my best using my popsicle stick to fill out some of those spaces. And I'm also not super worried because the resin will move around quite a bit and sort of fill in any empty space over time. Just starting with my black on that outer edge there. And I'll go ahead and put some gray pretty much right on top of that because I want those two colors to really blend in together adding a little bit more of these darker colors to break up that big white space in the middle there. And then just repeating the process with my second piece. So after I've got my colors down, I'm gonna go ahead and use my heat gun and I'm gonna start by just warming up the resin before I start pushing it around. As the resin gets heated up, it gets more and more fluid and easier to push. So just to make sure that you've got some nice control over it, you don't wanna to work too quick, just kind of warm it up and then start playing around with moving those colors, blending them out together and getting some cool effects. Just going in with a little bit more black here just to highlight a couple different areas and make it a little bit more geode or marble looking. And then finally, I'm gonna go ahead and take some more of my crushed glass. For one of these pieces, I'm gonna use a gold colored crushed glass. And for the other one, I'll use silver, just so we can kind of see how the different colors look, decide which one we like best. But I'm just gonna be using that to line that outside edge there, give it some nice texture. I'll also be adding a couple of those gold flecks to the outside corner. And I can just use a paintbrush to clean up that line a bit, make sure everything's where I want it to be, and also kind of give it the shape that I'd like. And for the next piece, I'll be using silver. So starting with putting a couple little silver highlights in the corner and then just going along this line, cleaning it up once again. And that will be it for this night. I'll let these harden. And then once that layer is fully cured, we're going to move on to the next step. So I've mixed up about 40 milliliters of resin here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some more of my crushed glass and I'm going to go ahead and make a couple detail lines as well as reinforce those first lines that we made from the bolder, chunkier crushed glass. So I'm just pouring all of my crushed glass out into my different cups. I've got one fine gold color and a chunky gold and one fine silvery color and a thicker silver. And when I'm mixing these with resin, I don't want to put too much resin in them because I don't want them to spread out. And I also don't want the clear resin to kind of get everywhere outside of the crushed glass. So I'm just using enough to kind of keep the resin together or make it a little bit of a paste. So it still has a little bit of movement, but not too much. Then I'm just using some sandwich baggies here. It's a little awkward to get the glitter into the sandwich bags, but I'm just gonna use that there as a piping bag. So pushing it all to one corner, twisting it off, 
and then I'll go ahead and cut off the tip to use these as piping bags. So just starting, like I said, by reinforcing that first nice chunky line that I made because as the resin cures, some of them did kind of go down into the existing resin that was there and I really want to make sure that these trays have some really nice cool texture to them. So I'm just massaging some of those glass shards out of there and reinforcing this line. I'll also be using a popsicle stick to go ahead and just clean it up a little bit, make sure that everything is really well attached and where I want it to be. And then just going in with some of this smaller crushed glass to make a couple detail lines as well. And just using my popsicle stick to clean that up a little bit, make sure that whole line is connected and touching and sort of spread that out. As you can see, I didn't have very much of that crushed glass left, so I'm just making the most with what I have. It's definitely more than enough for this project. And when I'm happy with how it looks, I'll set that to the side to cure, and then I'll be moving on to my second piece and just repeating that same process, but just using the gold-colored crushed glass instead. And I think these are looking great so far, so I'm just going to let this layer of resin cure before moving on to my next step. So after that resin is totally cured, I'm going to take my deco colored premium paint pen. I've got a gold pen and a silver pen, and I'm just going to go ahead and reinforce that nice thick chunky line at the bottom along with adding some more detail lines in the gold. And this gold color paint pen just has such a pretty shine. It's gonna look really, really nice. It hits the sun really well. It's got a very metallic finish. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the outer border gold as well. And just adding a couple more detail lines to the black side of the tray. Thought it might be kind of cute, and I'm glad that I did. Thickening up one of those lines just to give it more of a geode effect. And then moving right along to my second piece, and I will be adding some details in silver to this one. And this one I just wanted to see what it would look like if I made that thicker line have the silver highlight on the outside as instead of the inside edge. I like them both ways, let me know which one you like better. and just painting that outside edge silver as well. And make sure that you shake these pens up before you work with them, they do tend to dry out, so just give them a little bit of love. You can also use a little paper just to get the ink flowing. And then our final step will be to top coat these babies. And so I'm top coating them for two reasons, or actually three reasons. The first reason being I want to make sure that all of my little crystals and glass pieces are all really thoroughly connected. The top coat will also give a really glossy finish to the entire piece. And the top coat will also act as a protectant so that my silver and gold paint pen won't chip over time or with use. So I'm just using a very small amount of clear resin here and using my finger to spread that around and make sure that the entire piece has a very even and very thin layer of clear resin. 
I'd also like to point out that while I'm putting on my top coat, I do have my pieces sitting over two small cups. And that's just to make sure that I don't have any drips come over the side of my piece and stick to my work surface or get kind of messy on the bottom of the piece. So I will go ahead about 30 minutes after working on these and check for any drips and just wipe along the outside edges just to make sure that everything's even and looking really good. And after I've got a nice even top coat on both pieces, I'll hit them with my heat gun one more time just to pop any air bubbles and make sure that the resin has gone through all those little crevices. And then it's gonna be time to cover these up and let them cure completely. All right, and then after our top coat is completely cured, these pieces are done and ready to go. I think that they both turned out really beautiful, and I'm so curious to know your thoughts down below in the comments. So that is it for me today. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a like. And also, if you like these pieces, I will have them listed in my Etsy, which is fragilebeings.com. I'll have that link down below in the description. And if you did make it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much. It really means the world to me. Thank you so much for sticking around around and seeing this project through to the end and if you did make it all the way to the end leave me any emoji that you want in the comments down below so that I know that it's real I really hope that you found this video informative and I hope that it inspires you to make something of your own today also definitely let me know down below in the comments if you like the gold or the silver one better I'm really curious to hear your thoughts thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next one bye